Hello everyone, welcome to Neurophysiology. These are the series of lectures which I'm going to give. Okay, we'll talk about various uh, parts of the spinal cord, various parts of the brain and their functions. But before we look at those things, it's important to understand the, the basic structural unit of the nervous system, which is the neuron. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about uh, the neuron. I'm going to talk about uh, the classification of the neurons. We're going to see that there are types of neurons. They can be classified according to the number of pores, according to the functions, according to the length of the axons. And then we're just going to appreciate the structure of the neurons. And then we'll look at uh, important chemical substances, which we call neurotrophins or neuro, uh, neurotrophic factors, because these are essential for development of uh, neurons. Um, this diagram shows the the structure of the neuron. Okay, they are functional and structural units of the nervous system. They differ from other cells of the body in various ways. One of them, neurons have um, branches or processes called the axons. This one here. This is only unique in the neurons. They have uh, branches or processes called axons and uh, dendrites. The other difference from other cells, neurons do not have centrosome. So it cannot undergo cell division. I'm going to show you the structure of the centrosome later on. Number two, or number three, neurons, they have what you call niso granules. And these are special character, which are found in the nerve cells. And another important difference is that neurons have a lipid coat, which is a myelin sheath. Okay? Most the neurons have a lipid coat, which is a myelin sheath. We'll talk about it later on. The other difference is that neurons, they carry electrical impulses to and from the brain and spinal cord. Okay, not any other cell can do that apart from neurons and probably maybe the muscles which are also excitable cells. But uh, neurons are the, the cells that carry electrical impulse to other parts of the body. And then the other thing, the way they are shaped, the other differences, is that the neurons, they are one of the largest cells and they are long in our bodies. Okay. And probably the last difference between other cells is that neurons have uh, three parts. They have the cell body. They have the axon. And just say they have the cell body, they have the axons, and they have uh, these processes. You cannot find these in other cells. Okay, this is the centrosome, which I said uh, that neurons do not have centrosome, so it cannot undergo cell division. These are what you call permanent cells, they're not labor cells they are more like permanent cells that's why regeneration of these cells once damaged it is uh, very difficult okay so what is a centrosome these are structures which are found inside the cells they are made from two centrioles and the centrioles are microtubule rings okay these they are microtubule rings their main purpose is to organize the microtubules and provide the structure for the cell as well as work to pull chromatids apart during uh, cell division. Okay, you re we remember this from, uh, uh, from the previous studies. So the centrosome are made up of two centrioles. Centrosomes are microtubule organizing centers that contains the gamma tubulin. So this help in uh, mitosis, 
cell division. Okay, so these are the structures which are absent in the neurons. Okay, let's go to the next. This is the classification of the neurons. There are three ways of classifying neurons. Number one, it is based on the number of poles. Number two, we can classify them according to the functions they perform. And then we can also classify them according to the length of the axons. Let me start by looking at uh, classification based on the number of poles. Classification based on the number of pods, we have the unipolar, bipolar, pseudo-unipolar, and multipolar. Okay, I'll start with uh, describing uh, the, uni, the unipolar. Unipolar. Uni just means one. These neurons have only one process called the pole or the neurite. And it extends from the cell body. So this is the only process you can see, which is the neurite or a pore. Neurites then branch to form dendritic and uh, axonal process. They are, uh, are extremely layer in, uh, I mean, layer in adult vertebrates. They can only be present only in embryonic stage in human beings. And during development of the embryo, neurons also undergo development. So they become bipolar and multipolar during development. So you can only find these usually during embryonic development. Okay, and then we have the bi. Bi means two. Okay, there are two processes which are coming from the cell body. That's why they are called bipolar. Here we said there is only one process coming from the cell body. That's why we call it unipolar. So, the bipolar, the two processes, one on each end, arise from the elongated cell body. These neurons have sensory functions. Okay, they transmit information received by the dendrite on one end to the central nervous system via the axon terminals on the other hand. Example of that of such we have the retino, uh, retino bipolar cells, not red blood cells. The retino bipolar cells. We also have sensory cells of cochlea. We also have uh, in the vestibular ganglion, also called the scapus ganglion. We are going to see this when we look at uh, special sensors. Okay, so that's the definition of bipolar. They have two processes. Maybe let me just give you an example of um, of uh, bipolar cells. Okay, these are the bipolar cells which are found within the retina. Okay, these are actually these are can be defined as, as retinal interneurons and provide the main pathway for photoreceptors to the ganglion cells. They provide the, the main pathway for photoreceptors to the ganglion cells. Okay, we're going to look at this when we look at vision. Another example is also noticed. Another example of bipolar neurons. The sensory, the sensory cells of cochlea. Sensory cells of cochlea. Okay. In the sensory cells of cochlea, we know that the cochlea is the this one. It's an inner ear that looks like a snail. Actually, cochlea is a Greek name for snail. 
So the cochlea receives sound in form of vibrations, which causes the stereocilia to move. The stereocilia then convert this vibration into nerve impulses, which are taken to the brain to be interpreted. So within the, the stereocilia, these are, these are examples of bipolar neurons. Okay. We'll still talk about this later on. I'm just saying, I'm just giving you examples of the bipolar neurons. Okay, so this is a classification based on the pause. Now there's also classification based on the function. Classification based on the function. Sorry, you cannot see this. Okay, but this is classification based on function. Now, classification based on function includes uh, the motor neuron and the sensory neurons. The other name for motor neurons, we call them efferent neurons. These, they carry impulses from the central nervous system to the peripheral effector organs like the muscles, the glands, the blood vessels, etc. And usually these are efferent neurons, they have long axons and short dendrites. But when you look at the sensory neurons, they carry impulses from the periphery to the central nervous system in this direction. These, they carry impulses in this direction. They have short axons and long dendrites. So in the nervous system, we're going to have such uh, uh, nerves. Okay, we'll discuss more of that. And then we have also classification according to size or classification based upon the length of the axons. We have Golgi type 2 and Golgi type 1. The Golgi type 1, these are the principal or projecting neurons. Example, the motor neurons in the ventral horn of the spinal cord. They possess very long axons and form long fibers tracts in the brain and the spinal cord. And the cell body of these neurons is in different parts of the central nervous system and their axons reach the remote peripheral organs. Okay. 50 to 70 centimeters long. That is from the cortex to the tip of the spinal cord. So this is a classification according to the length of the axon. On the other hand, the Golgi type 2 neurons have short axons located in the main in the cerebral cortex and the spinal cord. And they are usually interneurons. Okay, so this is classification according to the length of the axons. The Golgi type 1 and Golgi type 2. So Golgi type 1, we are saying they are mainly um, project to periphery organs. But in Golgi type 2, they are short and usually found in the cerebral and the cere uh, cerebellar cortex. Now, they, in some books, you are going to hear of this classification. This is called the amacrine neurons. Amacrine. Like this. Amacrine. Amacrine neurons are actually also called anaxonic neurons. And these are usually interneurons in the retina. So some books will classify them according, uh, they, they may classify these as another separate type of uh, uh, neurons, the amacrine. Okay. And then some of the features of the amacrine neurons is that uh, they lack the axons. Okay. They are also called the kajal for their lack of an axon. For example, the interneurons between the ganglia cells and the bipolar cells. Okay, they have many dendrites, but no one true neurons. I mean, no true axons. 
And uh, the other thing is that these amacrine do not produce action potentials, but they regulate electrical change, electrical changes of adjacent central nervous neurons. Okay, so this is the classification of uh, neurons based on the number of pores, based on the length of the axons, and based on the function. So next I'm going to look at the structure of the neuron, the typical structures and parts of the neuron. Thank you very much for your attention.